everyone welcome to the channel knowledge star continuous knowledge excellence my name is karuna singh namaste today on our show we have a very special guest dr devendra bridhurkar senior scientist formulation expert nurix pharmaceutical barcelona spain welcome sir yeah good morning good morning everyone okay so we will start with the very very first question that is share your experience as a formulation expert at nurex pharma spain okay uh, first of all thank you thank you very much for inviting me uh, as a guest for in this uh, very important or a very useful platform of the center of legal excellence uh, to in, to, uh, to interact with you uh, about the formulations so about formulations i am basically about me uh, i am formulation expert with around 16 years of experience and at present i'm working in barcelona uh, my current profile is that i am working on various doses forms particularly solid orals like tablets capsules but here i am working as an innovative formulator so i am working on innovative formulations like modified release or nanotechnology for for the long acting injectables and this injections are very useful for the personalized medications for example if the dose is too high so then we can adjust the dose according to the requirement of the patients for example for pediatric people the dose is 10 mg then accordingly we can adjust but the same drug for geriatric it may be 1000 mg so that's my area that uh, that is known as the personalized medication so i'm working on that at at present uh by education actually i am a pharmacist so i did my graduation and then masters and phd from iit bhu and then afterwards i was working as a formulation expert in macloids there i was responsible for the development of formulations like uh, solid oral and the liquids in the liquids i was working in the syrups particularly the anti tussives and the soft gelatin capsules as well and the for the solid i was working on the modified release formulation so i have expertise in the modified release formulations all right so if i talk about the formulation expert so what exactly formulation expert do uh the formulation expert design the formulations for the new for the any uh, generic or for the new molecules so he use the new chemical entity then he mix the drugs along with the sub excipient because as such we can't give the api or the any drug orally because we need to modify into the any dosage form like for either in the capsules or either in the liquid form or are either into the injections so that's uh the formulation come in in that picture so the formulation expert or the formulation scientist develop this drug into the oral or, or the parenteral or the any Uh, any dermal product it's easy to administer for the patients so he do some research that first the compatibility because he makes the drug along with the excipients that you are going to use and then he will check the whether this excipients and with this drug it whether it is compatible or not if the excipients are very good uh, and then he will try some uh, formulation trials like the compatibility or the solubility of the drug if the drug is not soluble then he will try to convert it into the solubilized form because in order to get it absorbed into the body it is very important the drug should have in the solubilized form or it should have a solubility so if it is not soluble he will use solid dispersion like uh, there are different techniques of solid dispersion for example uh, hot mill extrusion nanotechnology or cyclodextrin complexations or milling the api into the nano part nano size and then he will convert it into the like dry powder or into the capsule or he will fill this uh, into the capsule or he will compress it to the tablets and then also he will check the stability the formulation which uh, the formulation expert develop whether it is stable or not or it is good for the patient or not so he they will also perform the clinical study in the human beings and after the clinical study the product will come into the market wait 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 are you worried about your project training dissertation internship don't think too much because nano science and technology consortium in short nstc is giving you a golden opportunity to do the same tasks nstc also conducts workshop on amazing topics so if you want to register in the workshop 
The registration link is given in the description box below or you may go to the website www.nanoschool.in where you can easily enroll in the workshops. So just check it out right now. Okay, as you have used the term nanotechnology, all right. So if I talk about that, the nanomedicines, so what are nanomedicines? Because these days, uh, this word is trending a lot that nanotechnology, nanomedicines. So what exactly is? Uh, actually, the API have the particular size. For, for example, it is in the always in the micro size, like 10 micron or 100 micron or 200 micron. But we need to reduce this particle into the nanoscale, maybe less than one micron, maybe 100 nanometer. And then uh, we, for that, we need to use different nanotechnologies, uh, the processes, the uh, high shear mixing, uh, high shear uh, milling, or uh, there are some, some pressures uh, that we need to use to reduce the particle size of the API. And that is known as the nano or nano system because the particle size of the API or, or the drug is in the nano size. So like, for example, nano suspensions or nano emulsions. And then if you give this kind of formulations, either you can give it orally, or you can give it the by the injections, but more properly they are given by the injections, like nano suspensions or nano emulsions. All right. So, what are the important components of formulating a capsule or a tablet? Because this comes in the solid orals. So the first one is the excipient is comes into the filler because we need to mix this drug along with the fillers. The fillers are like microcrystalline cellulose, lactose, or mannitol in order to make the volume. The second is if the drug is not go, uh, good in the flowability, then we need to convert into the granules because as such, the drug is not having the good flowability, good compressibility, and then we'll face the problem during the compression. So it's be always better to convert this powder into the granules. So we need to use the binder. For example, there are various binders, oidon or hypromellose or sodium CMC. So these are the binders. Then we need to add into the blade that is a dry powder then we need to convert into the granules so that for that we always use the binder the second is the uh, like aeroseal or the talc which are known as the glidon because after the granulation the flow in order to make the flow, proper flow from hopper to the compression disc it's better to uh, have a good flow so always we use the talc or aeroseal or some other glidons and when we use the high compression force, there is a possibility that the punch will stick to the or the tablets will stick to the punch, uh, to the punch. So in order to avoid that, the formulation generally uses the aero, uh, the magnesium stearate that is as a known as a lubricant. And there are some, uh, for example, uh, there are some other excipients that generally uh, formulation scientists use for the molecular particles formulation, the hydrogels, which have a high viscosity polymers or the coating of the polymer by uh, with water insoluble polymers, like for example, surilis or uh, ethyl cellulose polymer, which are water insoluble along with the pore form. Okay, so if we talk about the methods or techniques, so what are the new methods and techniques you are used in the drug formulation and development? Uh, now, as there are uh, various uh, processes going on in order to enhance the solubility because the solubility is the major problem. So there are nanotechnology, 3D P technology that known as 3D printing. What happened in 3D printing? We give like it's a normal printer, but it the printer cartridge is with the medicine. So we need to give the command with the print with the computer and then it will print tablet. So as I told initially during our discussion, the, the dose will vary from patient to patient. So the 3TB technology is very useful for this kind of patient for the personalized medicine. And that is useful for personally the CNS system, central nervous system. For example, there are molecules for epilepsy and the dose is from uh, 500 milligram to three gram. And it's difficult to give the three gram. So with this 3DB technology, we can print the required dose. So if someone, the, for, if there is a child and he know he need only 200 milligrams, so we can give the print that okay, the print the 200 milligram tablet. So that's a new technology nowadays. Uh, I'm working on, and that's really uh, new processes for the personal medications. And another is the solid dispersion by hot mill extrusion. So in hot mill extrusion, we use the drug and the polymer, and the polymer is melted by using the hot. Uh, by using the hot melt extruder and after melting the polymer the drug is dispersed or dissolved in the melted polymer and that's the reason the drug is getting solubilized 
And because of this solubility, the, there is enhancement of the viability because most of the drugs in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, I will say 40 to 60% of drugs are water insoluble. And it's difficult for them to make it solubilized. So the hormone extrusion is, is a new technology that uh, most of the pharmaceutical companies are now nowadays using. What are the major obstacles in the drug development industry? Uh, the major optic the infrastructure and the cost of development and also as i said the molecules uh, because getting a new molecules is a big uh, investment and it takes a long time so it, it, it takes a one billion of uh, drug uh, one billion of money to to uh, get a new molecule into the market so mostly and also afterwards uh, once we develop these molecules we've come to know that this molecule is not stable or they have some solubility problem so these are these are some technical issues uh, there are in pharmaceutical industry and the third thing is the intellectual property rights okay so what do you recommend a homopathic drug or an allopathic drug uh, both have the advantages. Homeopathic, of course, this is the good without any uh, side effects. But the problem is that it takes a long time to get a, uh, get cured. But in case of allopathy, this, yeah, there is like they have some interactions or some side effects. But the effect is very good. And uh, in allopathy, we have uh, the treatment for every 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 disease. So, and I think uh, homeopathy still, we are facing some problems and we don't have a uh, cure for a, for medicine for every, every treatment, every disease. But so I prefer homeopathy. Correct. But we heard that there are many side effects of the allopathic drugs. So. Yeah, uh, that's the reason that formation expert with his knowledge and so we can reduce these side effects by converting this formation in, in the more mod modern way. So like instead of like the main side effects are because of his dose. So you need to adjust the dose according to the patient because every patient has his own requirement. So by using this uh, new processes or new development, we can reduce the side effects. Okay. So there is a term ADME. So what is it and what is the importance of this? Uh, the ADME means that the absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and that comes and also the pharmacokinetics. So these two terms are very useful in pharmaceutical industry, particularly for the clinical, uh, because absorption is very important. When you do any tablets or capsules, it goes into the stomach, it dissolves, but afterwards it should get absorbed into the bloodstream. So that's the absorption comes in the picture. But once the absorption done, what will happen? So it should go to the body. So that's one distribution should be done. And after distribution, of course, the body has the mechanism that they always metabolize the drug or any for anything that you will uh, you will eat. So they will metabolize the drug, and then finally it will get extracted from the body. So that's the reason. And when we develop any medicine, so we always consider this absorption, distribution, metabolism, and or in short, ADME, because uh, finally the medicine should get absorbed and it should show the clinical effect. So we always perform the clinical study in that we study the uh, this uh, ADME as well as the pharmacokinetic. And that's uh, that's the reason we should go for the absorption and for the for the absorption, the drug should have in a civilized form. And that's the reason most of the companies they start working on civilization of the API because absorption is very important to get the effectiveness of this medicine. So, what is the scope of homeopathic drug? I mean, homeopathic drug is better or allopathic drug is better? And what is uh, I, mean, I prefer the allopathic drugs, they, they are better than homeopathic. And allopathic <laughs> drug has the more scope. Yeah, they have more scope and they have the wide range of availability for the various diseases. All right. Okay, last but not the least, what message do you want to give to our viewers? Uh, first one thing that the formulation ex uh, business is now growing up and there is a new technology is coming on like the 3DP or nanotechnology or hot but extrusion or solubility enhancement by cyclorexin composition. And the pharmaceutical industry is having really booming, and uh, the the pharmacist role is is nowadays uh, 
the people are acknowledging the role of the pharmacist initially before one decade ago it was not there but nowadays the pharmacist plays plays a very major role so yeah the pharmacy education is is very good and i prefer that if the people want to make a career in pharmacy university so they have a huge scope in pharma industry either you can go in pharmaceutical company or you can become a drug inspector or you can go in the, the pharmacist or or there are various uh jobs that the pharma after we after the pharmacist uh, he can he can do thank you sir thanks for this wonderful interaction and uh, i would like to tell to our viewers if you like this video then please do subscribe to the channel and for these type of informative and educative videos hit the bell icon subscribe to the channel and share this video as much as you can thank you sir thank you lord thank you very much yeah thank you thank you very much thank you for more updates subscribe to our channel click the links shown on the screen to stay connected